All right, hello everyone and welcome to your Monday Live Lighting Critique. My name is Mike Tanzillo. I'm one of the co-founders here at the Academy of Animated Art. And as you know, every Monday and Friday, uh, I am going through all of the submissions of our students within the last, well, on Mondays, it's an interesting one because it'll, it's everything from Friday night to Saturday to Sunday. So today we have a lot of submissions. So we're gonna jump right into it. So let me go ahead and share my screen and we will get underway. As always, I have the, um, uh, you know, we've Facebook Live going on here, so I will check back occasionally into this to see if you all have any questions and to make sure my microphone is turned on so that I am actually recording the audio here and you can hear me. So uh, let's go ahead and get started here. Let's go ahead and share the screen and away we go. So first off, we're going to go through, um, I'm going to start with Aaron because I missed him on Friday. Um, and then we're going to go to uh, uh, Yang Lu has a animated shot, and then we have a bunch of other, I'm telling you guys, we have a lot of submissions today. So a lot of really, really cool stuff. Um, a lot of stuff ranging like the full, the full spectrum. So actually what we're gonna do, we'll do Aaron's first, cause that's, uh, I promise that. And then we will, yeah, and then I'll, and then I will go through all of the, actually, you know what, we'll do that. We'll do Aaron's first. We'll go through all of the Haunted House submissions. Uh, just so you guys can be in that headspace. Then we'll hop over to Yang's and then we'll hit up the other submission. So this, again, our monthly lighting challenge for this month. So um, Aaron, your latest and greatest, we've got, uh, I like how that, and I don't know if this is different than before, but I really like how this is like fading off now on him, uh, on, our, on the main character there on the porch. I like that there's like a fading towards the bottom. Um, it's it's almost like that this light here should get lesser as it goes down. It gets like a little bit of a darker green color. Um, and so it's, it almost feels like it should dim down a little bit and like be centered more around him. Um, in terms of this red light, I like the fact that it's spilling onto the ground here. That's looking really good, but the ground seems really flat. Like it seems like there's not a lot of bump or variation within that. So I would uh, check in on that. I love how this is providing some framing elements around here. Um, I'm just wondering, looking, like, looking at this, I'm wondering if we couldn't play up the intensity of this to be even brighter overall, like the green glow, just because this moonlight is pretty powerful and it's, it's almost taking, it, taking away from this region. So I would really kind of amp this up um, and maybe even tone this down slightly. So yeah, so I'll tone down this moonlight amp up this the the green glowy light that's uh, emitting around make sure you get some kind of bump map or something here on the road and um additionally it, it feels like like this part of the house like that part of the roof should be dark i guess because the moonlight's kind of creeping over a little bit it just feels kind of spotty it feels like kind of like it would be noisy so i would just i, I would maybe just tone down the roof a little bit um but i think the background looks really good I would like to see more of these like super like blue hues maybe creeping into here um, and into some of the shadow regions, maybe on top of the trees too. It's just just to kind of cool those off to get that to line up. So it's a little cooler overall. Um, yeah, like you see how like this has got a similar blue background and now like looking into these shadows, there's more of like a blue, um, a cool tone to them even in this, um, in some of these other ones as well. So I think that's really good. Uh, Alfredo, so we've got your new version versus your previous one. I like that we've darkened around this and really kind of focused in here. I think we can get a little bit more like volumetrically glow out of this, just like a little bit more. It's just that I'm seeing like for it being this bright, this edge right here is pretty sharp and it would be nice if there was just like a little bit of glow that was behind him and then um, the darker values of the character could kind of kind of stand off from that just a little bit more. But other than that, again, this one's looking really great, as is this one. So I'd say maybe the same thing here, just, just to get them to line up, maybe a little bit of glow back behind, allowing the darker elements to pop forward. I would also consider continuing to tone down that white spot on the top of his head. Um, I like the way that the eyes are just kind of popping out of the darkness here, and I think the dog could do the same thing, or the hound, or, or, um, or whatever we want to call it. And um, I like the adjustments that you made to the headlights, I really like that we can see some of the, the, the um, or like some of the, the flares been, 
it's, it's starting to spill over a little bit. The one thing that I think what we're losing is a little bit of that headlight detail that I would like to maintain if possible. Um, so I, I think that this is getting a little bit washed out and it would be nice to maintain that detail. I like the reflection in the windows. Sky gradient's looking really good. If you wanna, I don't know if you wanna throw a couple stars up there, um, totally up to you, but really beautiful stuff happening all over. I think just those minor changes at this point. Uh, right, let's come back to these. Uh, come back to Amy, come back to Annabelle. All right, Brie, good first start. Uh, same thing with the headlights in the last one. Like we don't just want these to be solid shapes. We want there to be a little detail. I like the shape that you put on them. I think that's really cool. Um, in terms of the magenta, I think the color works out really well. And I like, I like the setup of it that it's creating this rim light and spilling down. It would be nice if there was more of a shadow from the character onto the ground here. Um, and then I know this is a straight render, but just like a little bit of glowiness around these windows um, as you go into comp. In terms of the value, I think we can definitely go darker back behind here and back in here, just because like uh, it's pretty even. And I think that we can just kind of create some more vignetting. Um, in terms of the headlights, it feels like, it could be crazy. It feels like, like this one happens here and then this one shines way out here and they feel like they're pointing at two different locations. Um, it feels like, and the reason why I drew this line, it feels like this one would start here. It would follow the same line as this. Um, and then there'd be like a spot here and then fall off that way. But I would just kind of look into that, um, make sure that those lights are facing uh, parallel, they're parallel to one another. And then in the, in, in the interior of the car just needs like a little bit more shaping. If you want to draw the car into the house, we could put a little bit of that magenta rim light on it and then allow this side of it to go darker. So I think, I think that's a lot of it too, is just like the foreground of the car could go darker, but it all depends on what we want to see there. Watch out for those materials. Those are super reflective and picking that up, which is fine, but they're very bright compared to everything around it. And I, my eye keeps getting drawn up there. Same thing with those guys. Um, but I think, that's, I think that'll be a really good place for you to start there. Uh, Danny, so this is your stage lighting. Um, and um, cool stuff. Like I said, I think that um, it's good to kind of keep these low, low lit. I would also expect, do you see how this volumetric light? It's a little bit brighter. It's just more hazy at the source and at the bottom. I would expect it to be brighter up here and then fade off as it goes down. So I would expect this region to be brighter. And same thing over here on this side, just like, like really feel like the light is emanating from that source. Additionally, the, the beams can go a little bit brighter just because now they're creating a good amount of light in those regions. And I think that we can, we can emphasize that by, um, uh, by creating some, uh, uh, by making those a little bit brighter. Additionally, the shadows that are in here are, are not, um, again, it's tough. Just try the next iteration of making those softer, like way softer than they would be from a light source like that. It's just like they're creating a lot of like really gnarly shapes that I kind of wish were smoother and, and more laid out. Um, Additionally, it would be nice to get some more material variation on the character. Um, it just kind of feels like it's all one, like there's no specularity difference between things. Uh, just, just a little more variation. You might have to amplify that up giving the color of your life. But um, yeah, I think that's working really well. I think these dark values are working a lot better because we really just want to focus in on these two regions. But really nicely done there. Uh, Dipali, good stuff here. I love the sky. I think your sky looks really pretty. Um, it's a little bit bright because it's kind of taking over everything else. I like the idea of this car in the um, uh, underwater here. You, the underwater cell is going to be really hard. Um, just because it's like, like looking at your reference, it's just kind of like these like weird little glows that kind of happen, you know, like it, it dies because of the murkiness of the water, the headlight like just dies immediately. Like it wouldn't even reach over here to the house. Um, watch out for the depth of field on this. This is a bigger scene. So you don't want a lot of defocus um, because you just really want to focus in um, uh, like, because th like this amount of defocus back here makes the house feel like a miniature. Um, and you really kind of want to, 
recognize like the largeness of this being a house and a car, like, you know, larger than human scale and not model sized. Um, so even if we turn this off, we have to find a way if this is our character to get, to get interest here, right? We can either, um, so if the character's shape is reading dark, we need to figure out how to get some light around there to get the, the character to read. Be it light from behind to hit a little bit of a rim, be it light from the sky, like sneaking in here um, and hitting the character and giving the character more purple and allowing the area back behind to go dark. Um, that could be one option as well. Take this stuff off. Oops, so we can see a little more. Um, but I think that's gonna be your big focus. Like how do we get this character to read? And, and then once we're zeroing in here, you can kind of take down some of this region as well. I think it would be kind of cool to do the, the sky influence on the character and then like get more of these purple, uh, cooler tones in the foreground, like over here, like, cause that light on these rocks feels pretty neutral where this is like that super magenta and then allowing, like keep this dark back there and then just allow the character to pop off. I think that would be a good, a good strategy to go from, from there. Donica, okay, first uh, initial design, very cool. Like the background, love the uh, aerial perspective, love the darkness that you're getting in the foreground. Um, this drawing of, of light coming out, I'm assuming that's just like light coming through the door and emanating around. Uh, that would work out really well. The other thing you wanna, like the way that um, this last one has a lot of light on the house, I think that you can split the difference and, and get just like a little bit of light scraping in here from the, from the um, atmosphere and from the surroundings. Um, because it would like, we're, it looks like with the amount of light that you're going to be pumping in down there, like this is really going to sell and there's going to be light scraping along back here. And, um, but like this area here is like total blackness and it would be nice to get a little bit of our read on the house itself. Um, additionally, we've got this spilling out here. It'd be nice if like some of these got rimmed up a little bit, just kind of separate out. And then, yeah. Yeah, I think this is a good start though. I think that you're, you're, you're well on your way. Grayson, very cool camera angle. Love that you're pushing it. We're getting this close to the ground. We got to maybe hit it a little stronger with a displacement or a bump. Um, just a more detailed texture because it was, it was kind of intended to be red a little bit higher. I love this. I think we can go a little bit more uh, contrasty, a little darker on our character there. Um, this, I would tone that down. You can go a shade brighter than this, but not quite that, that value because now we're, like if you squint at it, my eye is being drawn down this way and not here. I want, I want those to be pretty subdued. And in that case, I want that to be cranked up a little bit. And with all this haze going on, it would be nice if there's a little bit of haze over here too, kind of wrapping around where the, the moon wraps around this pole here. Um, Try and think what else. These lights inside the house feel like they're half on, half off. So either push them or pull them back. Um, and it would be nice Trying to think. So if this is toned down, there would still, like, do you see how there's a little bit of light hitting the side of the car here? It would be nice if we had that kind of influence from these lights onto the surrounding scene a little bit. It's okay if this goes dark in here, but just like a little bit of, and like, you know, getting some rim light on there, I think would work really well. Uh, but really cool start. Really nice, nice, nice job. All right, Hannah. So looking at your reference, we got this. All right, so with this one, one of the things that's really nice about this is the amount of haze and like fog and same thing here, just like a super hazy. And then we hop over here, the first thing I notice is just how crisp everything is. Um, with this camera angle, we're now a little bit higher than human eye level. I would, and, and it, again, it starts to, like, like depth of field starts to make it feel a little bit like a miniature. So I would kick the, the camera down a little bit just so we can be at like where we would be at eye level here. Um, terms of lighting i like that it's cool like you've, you've done a cool thing by having this be all warm light i would really push that a lot stronger like warm 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 light just kind of pulling out of there 
Um, and then for this cool light, I would tone that down. It's also interesting that this is the same color of what's happening inside the house. Like it's being tied all together. Um, I would almost neutralize these. And I guess for some other people, I've been saying to turn them off because they're a little too distracting, but I think that you can get away with because there's not a huge amount of other stuff going on. The moon is super sized here, which is another thing. And it would like, with it being that big, you would expect it to hit a little more rim light on some stuff. Um, and then the headlights for the car, um, as we've seen in some previous ones, it would be more like, like this whole thing would be glowing and this would be a lot brighter. Um, it's not so much like there, yes, it would be a spotlight coming out, but you've, you've really got to hit it harder. And then this is like more of a, a rectangle of light, um, because the way that the light rattles around and bounces around inside the headlight beam, um, really influences that. So there's that. And yeah, I would, I think, I think go from there. So less on the green, more on the red headlights up, consider putting some rim light from the, the moon around and then we'll go from there. All right, Jeff, this is funny. Uh, we've got now, uh, Rick is now battling our main character or maybe they're buddies. I don't know. They look like they're facing the same way. Unless my perspective is off. It looks like they're both going into the house, which is an interesting one. This is the first time we've seen that as opposed to the figure exiting the house. Um, so the color of this light isn't matching what I'm seeing here on the ground. Like this feels more brown where this one feels kind of a blue green. Um, there's also some dark shapes in there to watch out for. It looks like there's some things that aren't getting light. Um, again, with the same thing, I don't know if these lights are necessary. They're not really helping us at all. Same thing with this one right here on the edge. We don't want that. Um, so definitely this one off just because like you don't want it just like a butting up to the edge of the, the frame there. Um, but with these, unless these can provide some, uh, like a reason for being on, I would just turn them off. Uh, inside the house, you can glow those up a little bit. They can almost be as bright as this, uh, just because they're so small compared to that. And then for this light, again, yeah, let's get the ground to tie it up to the color um, and really push that in value a little bit and allow that those silhouettes to happen. Um, and then in front of the, it's, in terms of the, the, the headlights here, we want to see a little bit of, like I said, uh, what we're finding in some old ones is that the headlights are kind of at night are made up of three visual components. There's like a light beam that comes out of the headlight. There's a small bit of flare. Um, and then there's a pool of light on the ground. So you really would kind of want to hit those up and make sure to check some reference because the, the headlight actually is much, much brighter than that um, when it hits the ground. And then it also looks like it's happening very suddenly, like it's going almost down like that. Um, and I think that you could probably get away with it starting like out over here a little bit. And then like this area could go dark as well. Watch out for the uh, windows on the car. You want those to be more reflective. Um, and then just, uh, yeah, and continue on from there. So Jen, lovely. I think somebody said this looks like Resident Evil and I agree. Uh, there's a warm wash over everything, which is really nice. There is a big separation between the warmth of these trees and what's back there. And it's not that it's not that it, that's bad because these are being hit by warm light where those are being hit by cool environment. It's just that these are pretty flat. That could be nice to get more shaping on these trees from these lights because they are pretty small light sources, um, and that would create more of a uh, a light uh, a more drastic light to dark fall off. I would like to find a way to get this side or this side or this side of the car to be slightly darker. Um, I get why they're all kind of being lit uniformly because they're surrounded by light, but there just isn't enough shaping here. Like the head, uh, the top of the car and the side of the car have about the same illumination value and I would like to create more shaping there. Um, yeah, and especially over here, like, sorry, not to go back to this, but like these trees probably aren't getting light from any of these lights, but they still have kind of this wash of brown over them that's different than the coolness in the background. So you would need to kind of balance that out a little bit. Um, bum, 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 bum. Uh, let's figure out a way to get this character to read just a little bit more. Maybe it's just a matter of getting those eyes to be more glowy and like really, really reading like a pocket of the, that green light. Um, and then these are feeling very small. Uh, it would be nice. I would, I would add some glow and some bloom around those. I think that will definitely help. Uh, Jordan will come back, come back. All right, Kevin, 
So here's your reference. Lots of beautiful colors. Um, you know, I've got these magentas, the blues, the purples, the, the cool uh, desaturated uh, uh, moonlight value. So we've got that. And I think that I, I, th I see, I mean, I guess there's a couple of these warmer lights bouncing in. I feel like here they're, they're almost distracting. Like I would limit it to just either one of, like just one of these, not do all three. Um, and then in terms of the, of our character bouncing in, like, do you see how there's just like a little bit of light on the bottom and it's a lot of glow on the face where well, this light is really coming up all the way to the face. So I would really just expect just a little bit of a, a bounce in there, darkness in here, and then glow up the face from the lights, uh, light in the eyes. In terms of what we're seeing on these branches around the moon, I would push them, like make it so it's a stronger rim around there so you can really kind of feel the connection between those between the moon and the and the trees there um oh just saw him in the car if we're gonna play it up as if uh um he is a uh, main character in this we would really want to you know, maybe turn on like an interior light in the car or something to really get him to pop off um and it would be nice too if she uh if our if, if this character somehow tied into the colors of this house, like with the purples the, or the cyans, um, I think that that would, would, would certainly help out a little bit. I think that's a good next step from that. All right, let me just hop over into Facebook here to make sure, see if anybody's, hey guys, how's it going? I just want to make sure we're not having any questions or anything. Um, and we'll go from there. All right, cool. All right, Kira, so got your previous version versus your newer one. Good stuff. Do you, see how, do you see how like turning down these lights and simplifying the lighting really does help us focus in on the character? Um, so I think that's good. I think we can um, make these back here a little bit darker. I love that there's aerial perspective back there, but they're a little bit bright. And I would just pull them back a little bit. Um, in terms of this, it would be nice. I would favor, well, two things. One, uh, the fact that, that it's just like a solid color there is a little distracting to me. I would expect more bloom spill around here or perhaps like uh, like maybe breaking it up with like a little shape, like something in, inside the house to indicate that there are objects inside of there. Uh, and then the light on, the, on, on Sir Desmodus is a little bit... Um, uh, neutral. And I'm fine with that on his skin tone because we don't want to hit his skin tone with too much green light, but on his hat, on his uh, cloak and cape and wings and stuff, we can allow those to, to match up to this green color a little bit. Um, I think this might be a reflection of that. Maybe it's inside the house. Either way, it's a little too perfect. Um, and a house like that, these windows would be so dingy that it almost reflect, they would reflect very blurred, like, you know, like a cruddy window would. Um, looking at the car here. I, da, 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 da. Yeah. If these, if these lights are, hmm. if these lights are turned on, they would be brighter, especially like in the core and then just like allow a little bit of light to filter out of them. Um, I love, yeah, I, I think the, the moonlight is, is coming in well. Um, I just, I also just think that like overall we could use some more, um, softness to the overall image. Um, you know, like just, just, just a little bit of haze in the air, a little bit of glow in the environment. Um, you know, just something along these lines and we can, the dark and make it a little more contrasty, but like something along this line. Just to make it feel like there's some something something going on in the air there. All right, Lamise. Okay, so same thing with one of the previous ones in that we have a higher camera angle, which again makes it feel like a miniature, especially since we've we don't really have any um, anything going on over here and over here. It just it feels totally abandoned and it feels a little bit cg in that in that like you can just kind of see the edge of the world back there um in terms of the lighting i think it's a little too uniform overall 
like if we have the moonlight coming in this way, I just feel like I, I really just like want to zero in on some of this region and allow all this stuff to uh, uh, fade off. So I want some more of that in shadow, um, more of this in place and a way to get the character to read. Um, Cause right now it's like, the the porch is just getting bombarded with light like look how bright super bright that is versus the ground which is being hit by the exact same light but this is uh getting much more intense same thing with the roof of the house uh which seems a little backwards to me um so i would a i would tone this material way down uh b i would find a way to get the character to read off of the background again warm over cool light over dark uh, find some way to craft that in into your lighting, and then, yeah, like look out, like the that amount of moonlight would not cause that much much brightness on top of the car. I like where your head's at. I like what you're thinking, but um, I would just I would just take that back. So, and then I mean, like additionally, there could be hmm. that. Oh, that's the window there. I, I was I was. It almost looked like there was a, you put in a lamp there, but you. I mean, you could put in a porch lamp and like that would illuminate this character because again like if the moon's back there none of this is going to be hit by moonlight because it's all on the other side of the house especially the stairs um so just something to keep in mind there so again yeah let's let's really focus on zero and zeroing in on that region uh right nigel previous version versus the update really great job with the headlights also love the bright values that you're getting around here now like definitely not feeling clamped Definitely feeling like they got more gusto. Whoops. Definitely feel like they've got some more gusto now. Um, can you get light okay. um, I just want to create a new layer. There we go. All right. So yeah, so much brighter than the previous version. You're, you're limiting the uh, lens flare that looks really well. You've got these going, it's still a little dark. It's funny. Maybe, eesh. I guess it's just tinted glass. All right, I can buy that. Uh, you did a good job getting with the moon, getting that into the style of the background. Um, this rock could use a little more haze on it. Just to, just to step it back behind the car, just to allow that to separate. But this is looking really good. And then like this side of the house, I wonder if we can darken that a little bit. Just touch, same thing over here. Just create more shaping along that top there. Um, but yeah, I think this is good. Let's, let's try this with another version next time. It's good stuff. All right, Pearl, let's see. Got your reference here. So one of the things that I know, and like I love, I love, well, let me talk about the good things. So I love the color scheme. I think this is working really well. It, it, the, the thing that's holding me up is that like this needs to, like this headlight needs to be brighter. Like we really need to, um, like looking at the reference that you provided like this, this would be like more like that, right? Um, in terms of, of the overall brightness versus, cause like, like that is the light source. That is the thing that, that is the, the absolute brightest part of the image. Um, and it would be nice to, I guess, because there's some haze in the air. It would be nice to if like, so these headlights, again, are designed to shine on the ground, maybe, I don't know, however many feet out, and then bounce up. So it'd be nice if that amount of brightness would, would al allow for a pool of light where the headlights hitting the ground that would allow for a secondary light to bounce up and around. And that could be our, our motivation to really pushing some light in by the character here. And then you can get a little bit underneath these trees and stuff. Um, but I, I like the structure of it. It just feels a little bit flat and a little bit dim uh, out of the gate. Like where this is, you know, this has got brights, this has got brights, this has got a couple of brights in it. Um, this does not, but then this is like, I'm, I guess it just does that. <laughs> but um, this is just an old photograph. This could use some more brights in it too. But like, I think that, that you're on the right path there. So Raul, all right, Stan. Um, I like the structure. I like the silhouette that you're getting. I think that, 
Uh, these birds, you can hit them with a little bit of moonlight or something. Also vary up their poses a little bit. It's strange that they're all in the exact same pose. You know, these, these dark birds are tough, man. You got to get them with a little bit of light. This little girl um, or woman or man or whoever this is, I lost them. I didn't see them at first um, when I was looking at the image earlier. And I think that it's because like there's, there's a lot, it's, it's almost like let's make it darker behind the character. Um, and then this, that way that this light can kind of pop off. So it's like maybe tone down all of this stuff and turn that off. Cause I don't think we necessarily need that. Cause if that's the flashlight, it would actually be more, or the lantern would be more just kind of like a pool of light at her feet that would actually be casting a shadow from her. Um, same thing with these uh, headlights brighter here, really casting, like, they, like look at that angle. They should be casting a very long shadow from her onto the ground. Um, or you could just turn them off too. Uh, let's add some more haze back here uh, just to get some aerial perspective at night. They're a little too crisp and contrasty for being as far back as they are. Um, and yeah, and I think that's a good, that gets a good starting point for your, for your next round of notes. All right. All right, so we're back at the beginning. For now, we're going to hop over. I'm going to check out Facebook here, make sure we don't have any comments. Hello, all. Um, and make sure that, uh, yeah. All right, now we're going to jump over to Yang Lu. So this is our, our coffee shop scene in our asset library. Very cool stuff. The biggest thing that I, like, for, well, first off, the uh, texture uh, shader on, of the rain droplet glass, really beautiful stuff really pretty. It adds like a sparkle to the scene. It adds an interest to the scene. I just absolutely love it. Um, the biggest, I, the environment's actually looking really good for now. The biggest thing is the characters just aren't reading well enough yet. Um, and I'm questioning how we can make that happen. Like we can eliminate, eliminate this light, take this light, move it over um, to like here, allow that to live here. You know, then this could cast a light down on them and then we can pull this in. Um, or we can fake in like some outside light coming in and hitting them up or just, or, or you could also just artificially up their, their warm values and their overall uh, skin tones and, and just, just like amplify a little bit more light on them. That doesn't necessarily make sense, but does help us read them off from the background. It's okay if they're having like a difficult conversation and we don't want to hit them with super warm. Like it doesn't have to be happy. It just needs to read. Um, like, and I know that we're, you're hitting it with this super, super rim light that looks cool, but like just their faces, we need something, even if it's just like a soft fill light on their faces to get those to pop, but really, really, really beautiful stuff. And I wanted to show this to everybody. I also like, I love it because this is probably the alley back there now that I look at it. Um, I just love like how this light is as the camera moves, like watch this one. It's just like, as it comes around him, just sparkle, 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 like really pretty stuff. So really good job there. All right, let's hop back into here and see what non-haunted uh, house spooky scenes we've got. Okay, Alfredo, this is another one of yours with uh, some reference here. We're really making it like a uh, Norman Rockwell painting. So I think that it's just being a little bit over illuminated. I like the shaping on him. I like the shaping on uh, some of the objects. I just think that like there is a lot of bounce kind of coming in here that I really think we should tone that down and get some more focus in on him. We can tone that down too. Um, this is oddly clamped right there, right? Like if, so if sunlight's coming in through this window and hitting that, like that would be the brightest thing, but instead it's, it's kind of a clamped value. I, I mean, it would be way brighter than that. And then, um, yeah, I would tone down the brightness on his legs here to kind of make it feel like the light is clipped by the, uh, window there. And then th this stuff here, like the fact that this face of the cake is being lit makes me think that there's a light coming in this way. Um, that's, m and really this should all be about the light behind them, right? Like, so like this pillow shouldn't be as illuminated because the light doesn't really get there from back here. Um, and I think it should, I think you should play it up much more on this kind of uh, bright afternoon day that it, the light's coming in from the outside and you can push that sky a little brighter too because if we're exposed for the inside the sky will almost go totally white blown out 
Amy, really great example from one of the How to Train Your Dragon movies. Super pretty, a huge sense of scale. Like we can feel that sense of scale on this. Um, a character, and we talk about this in the classes, obviously, but a character that's a white tone is very, very, very difficult. Um, you know, like it's, it's getting these whites to be nice and bright and clean without going too bright while the shadows have color in them and they're not too gray and dingy and dirty. Like this kind of blue green uh, shadow value in here really, really helps out a lot. And then getting the eyes to read off of it. And then this perfect symmetry of, of, you know, the character here in the center of hiccup right in the middle and everything like perfectly symmetric around there. Also, you know, nice that it's getting bright here around our darker, um, toothless, uh, night furies. So getting those to, to read off too from the brighter background is really important. So really good submission there. Annabelle, so got this. Okay, here's your update versus the previous. Color is looking a lot better. Here's your reference. E, just like a touch more green. Uh, you don't actually have to hit these notes. I think like, so again, with this first assignment, it's all about like you getting an understanding of the reference, you getting familiarity with the light sources or with, with lighting in 3D. Um, and I think you've definitely demonstrated that. So I, I think you can probably move on from here, but I would just say that the background color could be just slightly more green. That looks good. Good job balancing the key and fill. Yeah, I think you're good. I think it's, I think at that point it would just be a matter of noodling, noodling color. So I think you can definitely move on to the next one. Ashley, yes, feeling this bounce, feeling really good about it. It feels um, like, do you feel like this kind of warmth and glowiness about the characters? Really good stuff. But now we need to justify it a little bit more from an overhead light because I realize it's almost like the, 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 the light coming from underneath is stronger than what's overhead. So let's, let's pump up. Go to the previous version of now. And good job with the vignetting. That really helps out a lot. So I think that we, what's going to happen is let's tone down. All right, so let's introduce some more light coming in from the top. I want to see like maybe almost like a rim from the top here. Um, a little bit brighter here on the table. Once that starts to come in, we might need to tone down this bounce fill value. Um, but I think that you're, you're inching closer. You're doing a really good job of getting further along and pushing to the next level. I think that that's all it is more light on the top and then rebalance that bounce light. So it might just need to come down like five to 10%. All right, Bree, Danny, other stuff. Okay. So thank you for, uh, for going through this. I like the light that's coming up underneath here. Um, you can see now how the room is working more. Uh, balance like the way that the light hits here is the same values on the wall. Um, everything's starting to feel a little bit better. Um, but I am surprised that like an area like in here doesn't go much darker, right? Like it feels like there's some extra bounce light in this space that's causing some issues. Maybe like, I don't know if what's happening behind me on camera but that needs to be a closed off room so that the light doesn't come screaming in um, and filling in some of these darker values. So I would analyze your light rig, um, maybe even limit it down to just this, uh, just the light coming in through the window, just like the key light and seeing if you're getting all of this, like where all this like fill value comes from. But this is definitely moving along. I like the center of interest here. We don't want it to be brighter there. We want that brightness to be up here somewhere. Um, and then we can, we can allow things to fall where they may. Um, and, but just remember when light comes in through these windows, they hit the planes, they get diffused. So the, the shadows are going to be a little, bit, a little bit more diffused than you're probably expecting as uh, shining through a window. But um, this is a good exercise and, and really good job. So do that. All right. All right. So an interesting alley here from Jordan. Let's take a look at your ref. So you were talking about like losing, like it's a little bit soft compared to the other one. I mean, you can get that back by bringing in uh, some darker values into the background, mostly by pulling back. A, like, I mean, you can pull back on the, on the fog a little bit if, if that, if you would rather like something more like in there.
Um, maybe something like that to get some of those darker values back in there. Uh, right. So I think, I think that that's the biggest thing that you're talking about missing from that. But other than that, I think this is looking pretty good. It's odd. Like this is another odd, like dark shape. Just check in on that make sure that's not like a texture thing. Um, but this is, this is coming together really well. And then, yeah, like maybe a little bit of shadow there. This is a little bit too bright that whatever that is laying on the ground there. Um, and then again, I guess maybe this is a shadow. If that's a shadow. That's super tight. You definitely want there to be more softness on that shadow by increasing the light that's causing that. Um, also, I like these specular hits that you're getting on, on these. They're, they're strong and they're, there's not enough of them, but I like that, that you're starting to get those to pick up. It would be nice if they were also getting picked up here. So there's just like more specular highlight on the, on the leaves themselves. So that's a good, good progress there. Uh, Jules, glad to see you back on this. His skin tone's looking a little bit warm. I, th I feel like we can pull back on that a little bit and just kind of like saturate it as a whole. Just do that for now and then just up. Hmm. I didn't do something there with fly, not crazy about it. Yeah, I mean, something more along those lines, it's a little bit blue. Just more along these, and then we can Something along those lines. So basically, we're just like this is just feeling a little bit too red, sunburnty. So I want to pull back on that redness, get some more uh, less saturation in there, and then we, you know you can throw this background out of focus if you want, because I think that'll definitely help. Because like these vertical lines kind of cutting through him uh, don't really help, and there's really not much of a story going on back there because it's just just these one beams. So I would throw those out of focus. Um, And yeah, I mean, obviously your, your light source is coming up from underneath, but like, I'm wondering if there's a way to get that shadow to soften a little bit. Depends on, it depends on if you want it to be like a flashlight under light or just like general scary light. So if it's just general scary light, I would soften that. But if it's like in a shot where like the light source is definitely seen, then, then I would keep that the way it is. But I would, if, if, if all else, you know, if you're just lighting this is in this, I would soften that light. Just to just to kind of soften up those shadows and see what you think. But great job with the specularity in the skin too. I meant to mention that. Kevin. If there's anybody else that we missed. Oh yes. So Raul with Poker Puss. Uh, it would be nice if we knew a little bit more about what's going on back here. I'm totally fine with it going dark, but the fact that like it goes to here and then stops. It makes it feel like it's the edge of the world. But the character themselves are really nice. It would be great if you, if you, I think if you like, you could favor that a little bit more to the screen right side. I know it's not totally accurate because like, it's like, well, dude, the light's right above his head there. Um, and that's totally true. But I want to kind of favor him to one side just a little bit more. And you can choose the other side if you want. But really, I want this. If that could end, if the specular highlight could end up more on his cheek, that would be a big help. Uh, and then, yeah, like the shaping on the cards looks really great. I uh, would hmm. maybe darken under the table just a little bit more. So like it definitely feels like the tentacles are emerging out of the darkness. But yeah, I think it's looking really great. The color looks really pretty on the, on the, on the uh, tentacles as well as the specular highlights and the little suckers. Really great job there. All right. Oh, Raul. I think this is the same one, right? Yeah. I think we're good there. All right. 
And last we have, sorry to make your wait all the way to the end here, Stephen, but we've got um, submission here uh, from Big Hero 6, and then you're trying to match a little bit. So good stuff. So looking at this, I love the softness of the light uh, and the kind of, again, playing off the cool and the warmth, shaping across here, creating like a little kick rim on his side. Same thing in his hat. Character here is in the foreground is blurry and, and kind of dark. And even though being hit by the same light as this, getting like tw only 20% of the intensity, I'm surprised they left that in there. I would have toned that down a little bit. But I just love the shaping on this character. Love the shaping across here. Love the cool to warm fill um, balancing act. So you're, you're kind of going through the same thing here. Um, it's a little extreme in the colors. So I, I mean, this is very red and very saturated. So I'd tone those down a little bit. And then see if you can't, do you see how there's like a long transition along here of, of blue? of cool light and then it kind of hits into this um, warmer tone. I think, yeah. I think it would be nice if there was just more of a, a fall off coming across here. Like maybe and if, hmm. it's hard with the sphere, but maybe just adding that second uh, key fill light that we talk about and just getting that to kind of fill in this region with a little more uh, key light be helpful. Yeah, and like looking at this, like just looking at this pyramid, like that is such a stark difference between each side. And it's, it's not quite in the spirit of all this softness kind of moving around and gracefully, like it's like a graceful dance as we flow into, into to hues. And I think that like that is, is, is a pretty extreme uh, example there. And then uh, just some other little things, like it's crazy how dark that guy gets. So just make sure nothing wacky is happening in there. Um, that's, it's interesting that light gets all the way inside the torus and doesn't get blocked at any point. Uh, double check to make sure this guy, the coil isn't floating back there. And then watch out for this again, same thing, edge of the world, um, lines back there. You can, um, make like a light table. So it goes like that. So you'll never actually see the corner back there. All right. Well, I think that is everyone for today. I'm just going to, uh, stop sharing my screen here for a second and then um, hop back into Facebook to make sure that we're not missing anybody's anything. And yeah, I think, yeah, I think we're good. Just checking here. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I included a, an ACES workflow thing. So, in our, um, if you go to the Academy of Animated Art YouTube page, if you're curious about the ACES workflow, I talk it through a little bit in an old video. Um, you can just search our YouTube channel. Like if you just go to our channel and go to search, and you can say ACES, uh, you can find it right here in our Let's Light section. Um, if you did I realized that we're not sharing our screen. So you can just follow those steps. <laughs> Sorry, I guess I used to sharing my screen there. Okay, that's it for today. Last step, make sure we don't have any uh, questions from anybody. And I think that we are all good. So thank you all very much for joining us today. Um, this has been a long one, but again, lots of good stuff going on. And I really appreciate you taking the time. So um, keep going, keep lighting, and I can't wait to see what you guys have uh, for me tomorrow. All right, happy lighting, everybody. And I did the thing again where I said that without actually being ready to stop the recording. There we go. Stop in the recording. Happy lighting. Happy Monday, everybody.